The much-anticipated debut of Kevin Gosman went down today, and he looked really good. He only went about 50 pitches, but the strikeout stuff was there. The velocity was there, and he looks ready for the regular season. So we'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as some not-so-good news on the injury front for the Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll have that and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Gosson. Some more news got revealed about the Shohei Otani, uh, Otani saga today. If you guys were able to catch that, uh, he spoke out through another translator, not Ipe Mitsuhara, but he spoke out through his translator uh, talking about all that stuff that went down, and he said he had no idea that his translator was betting and using his money to bet. So crazy stuff going on there. But we're going to focus on the, the Blue Jays in this video here, Nick, and Kevin Gosman specifically because he made his spring training debut today, and this was a long time coming. We weren't sure whether or not he would get built up enough in, in order for him to be in the rotation come regular season. We know that he's not going to start opening day. That's going to go to Jose Barrios. But maybe maybe he could join the rotation for the first series against the Tampa Bay Rays. Maybe he's being worked up to the point where he can pitch in the first four games of the Toronto Blue Jays season. And that would be a very welcome sight to a lot of fans and to the Blue Jays um, management and, and just coaching staff in general because – if it isn't Gosman dealing with an injury, it's someone else, or, or at least that's what it seems like right now. But Nick, he looked really good today. Dominant outing in his first spring training debut here with the Jays. And I cannot wait to see him pitch in the regular season. And I'm sure a lot of Blue Jay fans share that same feeling. Very good timing. Today was the last spring training game before opening day. So the next time the Blue Jays play baseball, it will be obviously on Thursday and everything will matter. Quick reminder, hit the subscribe button. We just hit 12,000, so thank you guys for that. We're on the road to 13,000 now, so make sure to hit that button if you haven't already as the regular season is uh, is fast, fast approaching. But let's get into it. You said it, and Gosman is insane. Now, obviously, it was just one game, so I'm just going to I'm gonna pump his tires a little bit here. Again, his first spring training game, it is spring training, but Peter... There is, and this isn't even an exaggeration, that is as good as you possibly could have asked from Kevin Gosman today, especially given everything that's happened. You can see here, and you can see from Arden Zwelling, we covered it I think a couple days ago or yesterday, saying Kevin Gosman will start for the Blue Jays today, um, and that obviously he was targeting 55 pitches, and if he felt physically sound, he could be in play for either the fourth or fifth game. Then we have BK Brandon saying this might qualify as pitch as well, three innings, two hits, seven strikeouts, velocity was good, command was great, which is obviously a thing you look for when coming off of an injury, and and uh, ideal in every way. Feels like Gosman can make that first regular season start in the back end of the rotation, whether that's the fourth spot, the fifth start, or fifth spot, sorry, is yet to be seen. But very, very good. Went as good as it possibly could have. And this is pretty big because given the injuries we'll discuss later on in this video, we needed Kevin Gosman and, and we need him badly, especially given uh, everything that's happened with the team. Well, I'm not shocked to see Kevin Gosman doing well because we know how good he is when he's healthy. Like, this is not some groundbreaking performance. Uh that were ready for a breakout season out of him. No, you know exactly what you're getting out of Kevin Gosman, and he's managed to stay healthy in the past two seasons. He's been a workhorse for this Blue Jay team. But there was a little bit of uncertainty with the fan base heading into the year because we hadn't seen him pitch, and we hadn't really had many updates. So obviously, this was a good step in the right direction here. Uh, but, I mean, let's just hope that he can go in that first series because we've been hammering this point across to our viewers for a couple of weeks now. The first 10 games of the season, it's going to be tough for the Toronto Blue Jays. And we see some comments, most notably some troll comments, uh, saying that the Jays are going to start the season 0-10. I don't think that's going to happen. So if that's you in the comments, uh, keep it going. It's good for the engagement. But let's not uh, let's not get carried away here. The Jays have a very good pitching staff, and they have – what it takes to get through that early portion of the season. But it just got a lot easier if you can include Kevin Gosman in that conversation. Because if he had to miss two starts and the Jays didn't have their ace for the first 10 games of the season on the road against those quality opponents, then yeah, maybe it's a possibility. But I think this shores up a lot of things. And maybe he won't go 80 to, to 90 pitches in his first outing. Maybe he'll be capped out at 70, but still, that's better. 70 pitches of Kevin Gosman is better than 100 pitches of 98% of the pitchers around Major League Baseball. So I'm glad that he was healthy. I'm glad that his stuff looked lively today. And hopefully he can... Uh, he can keep that going into the regular season and he could start on track. Yeah, I mean, if 
Uh, unless something gets re-aggravated, it feels like he's going to be ready to pitch, whether that's the opening series, uh, the opening rotation round through, because that, and I agree with you, it probably maybe will only be 70 pitches. Who knows how far he'll be up, but just having that is going to be important given the injuries. And if you looked at it, if you were watching the game, I mean, obviously it's Kevin Gosman. It's one of the best pitchers in baseball, but just to see his stuff look great, because this is the first time we've seen him since, obviously, last October. Uh, and uh, it was great. The splitter looked unbelievable, 95 mile per hour heater, and he in general is just very obviously exciting. He's our best pitcher. He's one of the best pitchers in the AL, AL East in baseball, and he is going to be pivotal. And I mean, we know we can tell by the many of the moves the Jays have been making so far and many of the cuts that they are taking these first 10 games very seriously regarding all the players. We'll probably cover that in a future video with all the other moves they've made, but. They want to win these first 10 games, obviously not all of them, and but they need to and they understand that we missed the playoffs by one game in 2021. We're going to keep bringing that up. Every single game matters, and uh, I don't think they have any time to uh, you know wait unless, of course, he is actually yeah. hurt. Yeah, yeah, every game matters, and, and I know that maybe doesn't feel that way because there are 15,000 people in the stands as opposed to a packed stadium late down the stretch of a regular season. But yes, every single game matters. And when you can have your ace uh, pitching the way that he has, he's a top five pitcher in baseball. I don't think that's a hot take at this point. He's been so consistent over the past three plus years, and I'm sure he's going to keep it going as long as he can stay on the field here. But it's huge. It's huge to have him in that lineup. And it's just a calming presence, you know, because every fifth day you can rely on Kevin Gosman to give you six to seven good innings. Uh, and and give your bullpen a, a rest, which might be crucial here in the early point of the season. And we'll touch on that right now. But but Nick, you can. It's great to have great starters like Kevin Gosman that can give you length and give you consistency from start to start. Because stuff like this that we're about to cover right now tends to happen quite a bit. Yeah, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, scary updates and scary, not in the sense of these injuries will be necessarily big hindrances going forward, but scary because. Our two best relievers are not going to be available most likely in three days on February or March 28th, I believe, is when the season uh, starts. So, Peter, this dropped today, five hours ago. Blue Jays aren't ready to make anything official, but Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson are very likely to start the year on the injured list. Club is still working through who would take their spots in the opening day bullpen. Obviously, Nate Pearson, Zach Pop, Ariel Rodriguez, Wes Parsons are all options. And, um scary stuff obviously again not major injuries but we're missing and we keep harping obviously on the first 10 games which not to mention are on the road all 10 of the games are on the road in various stadiums that uh, tropa yeah. uh, obviously tropicana field and uh, the astro stadium it's rough it's obviously not the way you want to start typical blue jays i, I guess you could say typical blue jays fashion granted this spring we were so healthy with injuries last year can't have the same luck, and we're already starting off with pretty uh, unfortunate luck to literally two of the people you wouldn't want to have injured at the same time. No, and that, those that's your eighth and your ninth inning guy right there. So that is a crucial blow to this Blue Jays bull, bullpen right now. But those names that you see in the back half of that tweet right there, they're going to have to step up. Pearson, Zach Pop has looked pretty decent in spring training. Uh, Yariel Rodriguez as well. The stuff is really good and he hasn't gotten too much work in but he's healthy right now and he's throwing a little bit more consistently so maybe he's someone that you could rely on look you're going to need everyone this is going to be a by committee thing for this blue jays pitching staff and they were blessed last year they were blessed with great health and and, and they were able to sustain a whole 162 game season without alec manoa being competent every fifth day so you look at all those factors, and yeah, maybe there were some outliers for the Blue Jays, and they they got pretty lucky. They got lucky last year in, in terms of injuries and and maybe guys playing playing above their expectations. But you're not getting that same luck at least to start the season. So you're going to need guys that maybe weren't big parts of 2024 to step up and contribute. And like we said, every game matters. So if Let's say, um, I don't know, Nate Pearson comes in early on in the season and he gives you a shutdown eighth inning. I think he's already more valuable than he was last year or or, or stuff like that. Like you're going to need contributions from different guys on a game to game basis. And I think the Jays have the depth in order to handle these injuries. But there's no doubt that losing Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano at the same time for who knows how long is just a massive blow. 
yeah, and we don't know how long. I'm sure we'll get some sort of clarity. I wouldn't expect it'll be too long, but you never really know with these things. And I mean, before we wrap up, you saw what Joe Siddle had to say there. He says he watched Gosman throw his bullpen session on Saturday. It looked good. Hoping all goes well Monday. Should be good to start game four or five. The concern is Romano and Swanson, two back-end bullpen guys who may not be available for two weeks. And Peter, um, quickly before we wrap up, uh, the guy would have to step up. Obviously, all these players that we mentioned, him, but Jimmy Garcia would naturally most likely be the closer now for the team mm-hmm. over the, the first couple of weeks. And, I mean, I think he can do it. I have faith in him. He's been very good in spring. At least he's looked very good peripherals-wise. He had a very solid season last year. Would I want him to be my closer for opening day? Definitely not because he's usually the seventh, sixth-inning guy. But, again, by committee. You know, the Jays' bullpen is so good that a lot of these players here could fit into regular, you know, other MLB teams' bullpen. It's just the Jays have a very good bullpen, and they're going to be tested. And if the offense performs well, maybe we won't have to uh, be as stressed out. But that's a lot to ask. Any final thoughts before we wrap it up? We're, uh, we're very, very close to opening day here. No more baseball until it matters in three days. Right now we're seeing Ricky Tiedemann get ramped up as well here later on in the spring. He's the name to watch as well. And, and I know there's no 40 40- – man spot free for him but if you put a player on the injured list like an eric swanson or jordan romano or even both then that frees up a couple of roster spots and maybe you get him in there in the back end of your bullpen <laughs> get some get some life no seriously like i, I know that we're, we're mentioning tim Meza and jimmy garcia and uh and obviously nate pearson but who else who else is in there that's trevor richards i guess trevor richards maybe but he hasn't looked good this spring and i think his leash is a lot shorter than some jays fans might be thinking right now so ricky tiedemann could be a name to watch if jordan romano and eric swanson go on the injured list because then that frees up a couple of roster spots but if not then i doubt it's a possibility but hey who knows i mean he's he's shown that he can get outs at least against left-handed hitters and we know he's got the stuff. He probably has the best stuff in the Jays organization. So that could be an avenue that the Jays take as well. Just considering how crucial those first 10 games are, you want to put your best lineup out there. And I know he's young. I know he's unproven at the big league level. But maybe he gives you a better chance to win than some other guys that have been getting mentioned here lately. Could be a, a fun one. Also, Henesis Cabrera. That's the other one that I yes, was, yes, uh, that yes, I was yes. missing in my head. But, I mean, other than that, it's, it should be fine. I'm just very excited for the season to start. I mean, at this point, even though these injuries are unfortunate, um, they're going to happen at some point. Unfortunately, it's obviously at the start. But that'll wrap it up. Let's know what your thoughts are on all of this. We're very close to opening day, which will be very exciting. We'll have you cover every step of the way. If you want to check out our video from yesterday, click on your screen now. We'll see you tomorrow.